So if you're confused about how to read the surf forecast, you're in the right place. So in today's video, I'm gonna make everything clear and easy. Now, there are many different surf forecasting sites that all basically display the same or at least similar information in slightly different ways. Personally, I always use Surfline. I find it's just the most reliable and it's the easiest to read. Surfline has surf forecasts for basically every single surf spot you can think of. Surfline offers both free and premium usage. The free version allows you to check the surf for the next five days, while the premium version allows you to check the surf 16 days in advance. Premium also allows you to use all the different webcams from around the world, so you can lie in bed. If you're feeling lazy, you don't even have to get out of bed to check the surf nowadays. While webcams are great, if you wanna be planning some of your surfs around all the other things that you've got going on in your life, you still wanna be able to read the surf forecast chart. So when you open up Surfline, all you need to do is search in the search bar your chosen spot, Click on your spot and then you're gonna be greeted by the page. As you scroll down, you'll see the opportunity to either buy the subscription and see a thumbnail of a webcam. And then the next section is the current condition. So this tells you what the surf is doing right now in real time. It will tell you the surf in height, for example, two to three feet. Surfline gives its own rating, for example, it might say fair to good or excellent or poor or fair. It will also show you a little snippet of the primary swell, the wind direction. But if that's confusing you already, let's scroll down the page and get into the real important stuff. First of all, we're gonna concentrate on the five day surf forecast. Surfline gives you two options when it comes to displaying how you wanna read the forecast. You've got sort of the graph chart display, which you can see here. Personally, I prefer this sort of linear table display. I just find it more clear and easy to read. You've kind of got to find your preference with that one. So as you scroll down, you'll see five days worth of surf forecasting. Now. When you first look at it, you go, oh my God, there's just loads of numbers. It looks really confusing and you wanna just close your laptop and forget about it. But don't worry, because I'm gonna make things simple. As an overview of the five days, you'll see data for 6 a.m., 12 noon, and 6 p.m. So those three times will give you sort of an average of what the surf will be like on that day. Now, what you can do is click to expand each day and that will give you a more detailed breakdown and give you data for every three hours through that 24 hour period. So whenever you're checking the surf, you want to use this display so you can see what it's going to be like throughout the whole day. You know, if you're a beginner or intermediate, the last thing you want to do is go, oh, okay, the surf looks really nice in the morning. And all of a sudden that swell jumps or the wind turns, you know, it can leave you with terrible conditions. So yeah, in the first column, we've got the surf. Now this is Surfline's predicted surf height average. So it might say one to two foot two to three foot. There's a weird thing in surfing regarding surf heights. Six foot doesn't actually mean six foot, just to make things more confusing. Generally speaking, three foot translates to like head high waves. Six foot translates to double that, so double overhead plus waves. And then one to two foot is kind of like waist to chest high waves. I know it doesn't make sense in normal like numerical measurements, but that's just how it is in surfing. And yeah, it's, pre it's pretty weird. I don't know why we do it like that. So anyway, based on that, that's what Surfline thinks the wave heights will be like. In the column next to it, the ratings column, that's where Surfline provides its rating based on the swell and the wind and all the other factors that make up the surf forecast. To be honest, I wouldn't look at this too much. You kind of want to be able to make up your own decision on what the waves will be like based on the swell and the wind. So in the next column over is probably the most important column. It's the primary swell. Now the primary swell is the main swell that's affecting a particular spot. Now there's a few different aspects within the primary swell that are really important. Firstly, you've got the swell height. The swell height is worked out from the average size of the waves within that storm. So as all these lines are moving through the ocean, the buoys out to sea measure that data and work out an average of those size waves. For example, you could have like a six foot swell, you could have a three foot swell, 10 foot swell, 20 foot swell. The next one is really important as well, and that's the swell period. Now the swell period refers to the gaps between the waves. This is also known as the interval. This refers to the time between two lines of swell, when they pass the buoy out to sea, how long a gap is there between those two waves. Now the longer the period, so the longer the interval, the more powerful the swell. For longer period swells, you're gonna have bigger waves. 
for example. Let's say you've got a two foot swell at 19 seconds and the same two foot swell, but with a 10 second period. Now, the two feet at 19 seconds is gonna be way, way more powerful and translate to much bigger waves than the two foot at 10 seconds. That said, the two foot at 19 seconds swell is gonna have longer gaps between the waves. It's gonna be more spread out but when the waves do come, they're gonna come with more power, they're gonna come with more force, and they're gonna be a lot bigger. Whereas the two foot at 10 second swell is gonna have a lot less power. The waves might be closer together, you might get waves more frequently, but it's not a very powerful swell and it will generally translate into smaller waves. In the third section of the primary swell, you've got the swell direction, which is another really important factor. Now the swell direction can play a big part in how big waves are at a given spot. If you've got a swell direction that is hitting a beach in exactly the direction that it faces, the waves are gonna be much bigger. However, if you've got waves or a swell that's coming from a slightly different direction and it's not hitting a beach directly, the waves are gonna go past the beach. Or as another example, if you've got a swell direction where first it's gotta hit a headland and then those waves have to bend around the coast to get into the bay, that's also gonna translate into smaller waves. So swell angle is gonna play a huge part in what waves actually happen on the beach. A good way to kind of determine this if you don't know your local spot too well is if you scroll up to the top of Surfline, it will give you a little map snippet. And on there, it will show you the direction of where the beach faces. It will show you how the swell hits that at what angle. And it will also show you how the wind affects that. In terms of surf conditions, wind is super, super important. Whenever you've got wind blowing from the land towards the sea, this is called an offshore wind, and this creates the best conditions for surfing. That wind blowing against the waves cleans them up, basically. It gives you those nice straight lines. It cleans up the face of the waves and makes them nice and the smoothest to surf. Vice versa, if you've got an onshore wind, which is a wind blowing from the sea toward the land, this chops up the waves, makes it super messy, not very good for surfing. Obviously, you can still surf when it's onshore, it just, it's less pleasant, it, it just makes it a, a lot trickier. So if you're a beginner or intermediate, you always wanna be looking for those offshore conditions. Surfline kind of makes it pretty easy to determine this. So if you use that same map at the top, and try and correlate that with what the wind says on the chart. Also, Surfline's pretty cool because when you drag your mouse over the arrow, that will tell you if it's offshore for that particular spot. But when you get so used to surfing the same spot over and over again, you'll be able to just look at the arrows and know automatically if that's offshore. So the wind, it'll tell you both the direction and the wind strength. The wind strength is also really important because that can have a major effect on the conditions. For example, you might have a nice offshore wind in terms of direction, but if that's 30, 40 knots, that's gonna make surfing pretty hard because you're gonna have that wind blowing straight up the face. It's gonna make it harder to paddle into waves. As well, sometimes you might have onshore wind, but it might be really light. So it might not affect the waves that much, meaning although the wind's not the best direction, it's quite light, it's not really affecting the shape of the waves. So then once you scroll down past that, you can see all the tide data. So the tide's obviously super useful. A lot of surf spots around the world can be very tide dependent. And then just next to that, we've got the sunlight times as well, which again, if you're trying to squeeze a surf in either side of work can be really useful to know. And then if you scroll all the way down, you've got a bit more information about that spot. For the most well-known spots, it will give you a bit of a description on the break and what it's like and then you'll have a few icons as well which give you the best tide and the best conditions. So with that information in relation to the, the tides and all the other information you've got, you can get a pretty good idea of what the surf's gonna be like at that spot. Now as well, when you start checking places regularly, you'll be able to you know, match up what you see on the chart with the waves and you'll build up these all these different reference points. So eventually you'll be able to look at the chart and know exactly what the waves are gonna be like before even going to the beach. Surfline also, it's got like a probability column as well right at the end there. So that is basically how likely that set of conditions is to happen. The closer it is in time, the more likely and the more accurate those conditions are. Whereas if you look five days in advance, that's gonna be a lot less likely. So yeah, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope it's made reading what I guess is quite a confusing chart, pretty simple. 
Uh, please let me know of any questions you have down in the comments because I'd love to help you out further. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. But for now, it's goodbye from me and I'll see you in the next episode.